Good morning. My name is Ken Chenot. I'm with uh, Bowman Kemp Companies. Uh, we're a manufacturer of uh, basement egress windows in the United States. Uh, we have been for uh, close to four decades now. Um, we've uh, pretty much uh, <clears throat> shipped our product coast to coast in the United States, and we're uh, <clears throat> expanding into uh, Canada. And we really appreciate this opportunity. I've got a uh, couple. Of, I've got a short little two-minute video that says about a million words. It gives you a real good summary of what what it is, what the product does. And I think what's interesting is you know we really look forward to the basement and I know that's kind of a a part of the house is kind of just uh, an afterthought if you will but we what we're going to show today is some really encouraging ideas in uh, how to utilize that basement to the full extent um, and we realize that that uh, price uh, that housing prices are getting so expensive that we need to utilize all the available square footage in the home and I think you'll uh, see some ideas that, that maybe will help you or uh, hopefully open up some uh, doors or some ideas. So, With that, I'd like to go ahead and show you this little two-minute video. For more than 40 years, Bowman Kemp Basement Window Systems has been an industry standard and have created more usable square footage in new home construction than almost any other practice. These window systems enhance natural sunlight, improve ventilation, and provide easy egress in case of emergency. However, perhaps the greatest advantage to a Bowman Kemp basement window system is the sheer ease of installation. Give us just three minutes and you'll be convinced that our basement window system will dramatically increase livable space in new home construction while maintaining below grade construction costs. Buck parts come from the factory KD or Knockdown. These precisely manufactured parts are quickly and easily assembled. Using the braces provided, the foundation contractor is able to hang the window buck in either aluminum or steel ply forms. These braces are required in every pour and are important in maintaining the dimensions and integrity of the basement window. The forms are removed and the Bowman Kemp window buck is left in the wall ready for well installation. The window wells are then hung without the need for any drilling or anchoring equipment. Our window system provides bolts in which to hang the window wells at various grade heights. The installation of washers is also required to protect against heavy soil and clay intrusion, along with cold climate frost heaves. The energy rated vinyl window insert is easily installed into the window buck. The provided trim strips create an interlocking seal that is both water and air tight. The installation on the ladder and safety grate provide for emergency egress and protection. The clear Lexan cover allows sunlight to enter the well while providing protection from unwanted debris. Once installed, the Bowman Kemp basement window is ready to finish in the same manner as an upstairs window. Framing, insulation, and drywall come together to create an open and light upstairs feeling in the downstairs living area. That kind of uh, summarizes um, what our product can do, and I'd like to uh, show you some um, cool ideas. Okay, our system is uh, made up of a uh, six pieces. Comes with the frame, the buck that pours into the wall. Comes with the uh, window well, the uh, CSA approved vinyl window, uh, the safety grate to prevent accidental fall in, clear plastic cover to keep debris and water and leaves and trash out, and then an escape ladder. And what we're seeing is uh, in the United States there's been a lot more uh, issue about uh, egress and uh, in the basement area, in the bedrooms. We're starting to see that um, moving kind of from the west coast. We were just in, in Canada. We were just in Calgary a few weeks ago and and um, the uh, code requirements are increasing and they're actually uh, making the uh, um, escape more prevalent and uh, more of a requirement and making the window well larger to uh, allow people out. 
I'm just going to show you a little quick. This is our manufacturing facility. The only reason I'm showing you this is the fact that we're, we're not just bending these things around our knee in the back of the garage. Um, Bowman and Kemp has evolved over the years and um, put their heart and soul into this facility, into the machines. And the result of that is a, a uh, top quality product that comes together and um, works every time. We had the opportunity to work with a bunch of different builders across the United States. We're not builders and we don't claim to be. However, we were uh, able to learn a lot of neat things from builders at, after talking to them and finding ways that they're doing to encourage the utilization of their uh, lower level. Um, there's four areas that um, will really enhance and help uh, encourage the utilization and uh, livable square footage. and that. Uh, number one, you can see you're putting the large windows in. Number two, uh, increasing the air circulation. Number three, waterproof nine-foot walls. And number four, large open stairways. And we'll talk about all those um, in, um, in, different, in different parts. The theory here is uh, on the, the, the house on the left is, let's say, it's 800 square feet on top and 1,200 on the bottom and then a basement. So you're buying a t the you're selling a 2,000 square foot home with an unfinished basement, okay? The theory is, why not be able to take and deliver a 2,000 square foot package, I mean, 2,000 square foot home in a different package? And by doing that, make that livable, make that habitable, and make that a reason people want to go down there and utilize that. Substantially less money, and and I know some people say, well, that's not the market, and that's not the way it is, and we understand that. However, Things evolve slowly, and we're starting to see different parts of uh, the U.S. adopting this as well. I, w I had the opportunity, I've uh, explored in Canada quite a bit, and this was actually outside of Windsor. And um, that's, you know, that's probably very typical of the uh, construction that we see through, throughout Canada. Um, you can see right there those little, those little windows right at the top of the wall that uh, you couldn't get out of, and it's... Uh, they don't do much to, to make it uh, enticing down there. See, for instance, that's a, a typical basement through, you know, in some different parts of the U.S. as far as in Canada as well. But you know what? Maybe we could have it look like that instead. That to that. It's entirely different. It's very inexpensive to accomplish this and very smart utilization of the square footage. Same thing here. This house is actually in uh, outside of Salt Lake City. You can see the, the the windows. They can go all the way around the house, and we know that we understand that your side yards are very uh, limited here, and these things are, are able to go into a real tight um, area and perform well. See, nice uh, guest bedroom there. See, that's a, that's a nine foot. Um, Basement. You can't even tell that's in the basement. That, that one guy standing right there is the reason I took that. He's about six three, and that's t typically not something you see. Uh, you know, ceiling fans and so on uh, in your basement. But when you think about it, that's no different than the the second level. It's just, and if if I didn't tell you that, you wouldn't even know that wasn't the not the second level. And see another thing too. Is see, look at the height. Um, from the window seal compared to the Canadian, um, it would be way up high on the top. It'd be really hard to get out uh, of the Canadian windows as compared to the, the egress requires you can get out, jump in the window, and then jump out of the and then climb out of the ladder. This is in Columbus, Ohio. There's a bunch of uh, six foot by five, five foot windows in there. This was outside of Windsor, and. Uh, Found some very interesting um, different. Now this one uh, is a window that, that uh, is down a little bit from the top of the wall, um, but still pretty hard to be pretty hard to get out. Same thing that that's uh, Canadian uh, egress code um, that's allowed in the different area, and they typically require um, even a, a piece of furniture or a ladder underneath there to allow for the egress. 
And what our theory, we encourage finishing that just like you would an upstairs window. Make it, make it look just like you would in the upper level. Now here's an example of, of uh, a window system here in, in Canada, in Windsor. And we'd like the pros is, why not have it look like that instead? Set it like that. Let's have it where you can, it's safe, you can stand on it, you can get out of it, and uh, it keeps it nice and dry and uh, clean inside the window wells with, as well. Same thing here is, of course, very close, tight uh, side yard. Maybe we could look, have it look like that. It would be a, uh, like a light tunnel into the house. Natural light, natural ventilation uh, in, into your basement area. Same thing there. It's uh, kind of a shame when you think about the cost of these beautiful houses around here. And that's just kind of accepted and standard. It's, uh, there's a, there's a better, better mousetrap, and that's what we'd like to introduce to you. Same thing there, look how nice and clean and, and uh, kind of unnoticeable, really. Same thing there, this is uh, outside of Windsor. Now, the other part, what we did is we had the opportunity to work with uh, different builders, and they designed different air systems and so on, and we don't manufacture air systems or anything like that, but what we, what we did find that in the, the folks that were adopting this is they want to utilize, they want to circulate that basement air. That's great uh, natural uh, temperature that stays year-round the same temperature and introduced into the house in the different levels allows for um, lower utility bills, substantially lower utility bills and um, warmer, drier places to live down there. That's, ba that's basically the uh, basement ceiling and what they've done is they've run that, the whole air manifold runs through the, the trusses there. And so basically you can see the gray furnace is just blowing down and some of them are either blowing into the basement or into the main level, but then they're returning from the, the two levels on top too. And that's what that shows there. Now another thing is um, wide open stairways to get there. When you think about it, a lot of times you, you look into the, uh, you know, you got to find the pantry door in the, in, the, in the kitchen to go down there. Well, that doesn't encourage, you know, living down there. And that's why, that's why the basement's been built like that for many years, because early on that used to be just the, the coal chute and the, and the furnace down there. And so that's kind of just evolved into that. But now with, with housing prices skyrocketing, there's got to be different ways to, to utilize that. Um, this one right here I want to show, this is a real neat, this, um, not only did he keep it wide open, but he really emphasized and utilized, look at the windows, and it really makes for a nice, uh, nice look in there. Same thing here. When you think about it, think about that, um, see that, that uh, comes in right off the front door. Think how much room the stairway takes up in the house. If you put the stairway right in the middle, I mean it just cuts up half the room. This right here, it, by utilizing this, um, you can pull that right off of the, right as you walk in the front door, go down, and then that way you have wide open uh, levels there without that cut up right in the center. And that's it down at the bottom, when it gets down to the bottom, so you can see the, the, this builder was in New Mexico and he really likes the, the ceiling fans, and that really encourages uh, a nice, nice living area down there. Okay, this this next part here is just some. Uh, other ideas and concepts that promote utilization of that square footage down there. Some of these you've seen before, but we'll just talk about them a little bit again. What we're talking about here is, is um, when you think about it, think about if somebody wants to go and they, they have a little window and they want to put a bedroom down there, think of the cost and the mess and the expense 
to dig up and put one window in there. And basically, if you look down at the bottom, if you look at the tractor, one retrofit, for the cost of that, you can put about five brand new systems in from the get-go. And you have this wide open, light, airy, livable area down there as compared to the little tiny ones and then worrying about a code official not giving you a permit because there's not a window in the, in the bedroom. Once again, our system, uh, we manufacture in, in white and also in the stacked stone, and I'll show you that picture. It's, uh, um, we had a lot of folks that want to make it look like uh, a pa you know, pavers in there, and so that's what we uh, found the um, correct coil painter, and uh, that's a 3D paint that the, the company um, works with the painter on, and that's what goes in there. Once again, you can see the, the six pieces that make up the system. Now that's a that's a four foot by four foot. That's the uh, in the states that's the requirement uh, for egress. In Canada, it's a three foot by three foot six is the minimum. That's just coming out, and, and that's what we just got in, in the uh, show in Calgary. Uh, we met with some code officials there, and they were very uh, kind and, and got us all the uh, literature on it. And uh, we've, got, we've got one of these, this four foot by four foot sample out here in the show. And we've also got a, uh, a three foot by three foot six at the show that you can see the uh, difference in the sizes. And what that encourages is instead of, you can see that's, that, that metal frame is just hardware to keep to hang the wall, hang the window in the wall. You don't want to see that. What you want to do is just finish that off just like you would an upper level window. R303 of the uh, International Residential Code in the States talks about lighting and ventil ventilation and livable space calculations. Habitable rooms have to have a glazing area of not less than 8% of, of such room. Okay. So basically, let's say, this, let's say that's a 1,500 square foot basement. You take away 10% for laundry rooms, stair, stairways, bathrooms, and so on. You see the calculation of 1,500 times 90 is 1,350. So you're trying to make 1,350 habitable. So you'll take that and multiply that times the 8%, which the IRC code requires. I, I'm not exactly sure. I'm sure your, the Canadian code is somewhat similar. I, I haven't read that part of it yet. but. Um, so basically, you take 1350 times 8 percent, you got 108 square feet. So in other words, if you put a, um, 108 square feet of glass, see those up there on the top are 5 foot by 4 foot, so that's 20, 40, 60. The other ones are 4 by 4, um, and then 48, so it's 108. So you got those windows make all that entire area habitable as, de as defined by the residential code in the states, and I would assume something similar to to the Canadian code also. Once again, here's that, that, that concept again. If you, if you think about that, you know, after seeing the video and some of these other pictures, I hope you can kind of see what, where we're coming from on that as far as that makes that a whole different, that makes that a whole different level. And just think how much less the house is going to cost if you can lock, knock off that top level and still deliver the same amount of square footage. Once again, here's that picture that shows the before and after. Little girl's bedroom there. I see that's uh, that one's five foot by five foot, and that soil is above the top of that window. And that's why we took that because it had the shit, the blinds on there. You wouldn't have a clue. Where, where that wasn't on the second level or the third or whatever. Now see the two windows on the left are kind of kind of similar to what uh, seen in different parts of Canada. It seems like the Canadians pull the pull the foundation out of the ground more, and a lot of it is just so they can get a bit more light in their more window. I've talked to right, and. Uh, you know, I, I explained that to him and talked to him. I said, well, you know, bring the foundation to the ground. Just think of all this cold wind and all that blowing against that concrete. And the 
concrete is absolutely zero insulation. And in the, in the soil, it stays pretty much uh, constant. And I know it gets awfully cold up here. I've been up here in January, too. So I know it gets awfully cold, but it's still better than having that concrete exposed out there in the wind. This one right here, like I said, this was one builder. This was actually in Texas. And uh, what he did was, he you can see that pipe in the ground there. And what he was doing was uh, returning the air from the, from the house in, uh, in the ground. To, so what it would do is it would naturally bring it down. Now, this is more of a cooling climate required. It's hotter there, of course. And what they were doing was they were bringing that in, and that was cool in that air off just by naturally moving it through there. Um, no, we don't know anything about that or we don't promote that, but that's just something that I found, found was kind of interesting. And he, the, the guy down there just loves it and makes a tremendous amount of savings on the utility bills, which uh, he was really excited about, obviously. And that was just a little, the way, it, you know, the register of the pipe. See, it was a 12-inch pipe that he was circulating that air through. It was interesting, too, because the, the, when the air conditioner was on, you couldn't hear anything because that air was just, you know, usually what you hear is you hear the return, that kind of that whistling. It just dropped into that thing, just quiet, quiet as a mouse. It was kind of interesting. We also explored um, geothermal. What we were trying to do is we were trying to utilize the basement dig to drop the geothermal pipe in. And that would have been just because that, that's the big cost, is drill, drill, you know, thing. But the concern was is that that could extract so much heat out of the ground that it could freeze the ground and maybe even cause problems with the foundation. So we, we didn't want anything to do with that, obviously. But it was something we explored, and I just want to show it to you because looking at it. I even talked to the, the uh, geothermal guy, and, and um, he said that a lot of times he's seen it where is they're, they're running the, the uh, pipe through little <coughs> ponds and it got, they extracted so much heat that the pond froze. And so, uh, very unique, very, very interesting. I don't know if you've explored much with geothermal, but it's a, it's a real neat, really efficient way to heat and cool your house. This is once again just uh, part of that same house that I was showing you earlier. See, those are, that's a nine-foot wall, and those are four-foot wide by five feet high. And it's like a whole different look down there. This one builder had, you know, just a bank of these all along the wall there, and he had a beautiful game room and bar and uh, bedroom, bathroom, and everything down there. Once again, the air system runs through the floor. This is the return going down, so he just uh, framed that edge, returning it all the way down to the bottom. And here was some of that, once again, the, the uh, under the slab duct work. You know, all, this just all this is just encouraging making that comfortable down there. Um, however it's accomplished, it's, you've got to start with the big natural light and ventilation going through there. This was probably the, the third or fourth builder in kind of explored that. And that I th we, th we think if, that's probably the best way to do it um, after seeing it. It seems like, and I, I checked with an HVAC guy. And he said it was about 50% less labor and 25% less material to do that. Plus the fact when you think about it, think about that. You don't have any fur down or duct work in your ceiling which makes a nice big white view just like the ceiling here. That's another thing, and this is what the Canadians are very uh, good at in putting a good waterproofing system on that foundation so it doesn't uh, leak. The last thing you want to do is have it really nice down there and have the thing leak, but the Canadians have done an excellent job. In the U.S., they still spray on sometimes. They spray on... Uh, a, a waterproofing membrane, where this this is a much better uh, much better system. 
And that Delta is a, is a Canadian company, of course. Now here's a sample of a couple of windows there. And once you got, you can see the, the drain pipe going down to the footing drain and the gravel. So done correctly, you know, you've got a, you know, it's a wide open uh, drain there to the, to the uh, footing drain. This is a picture of a, of a nine foot basement. And the reason I took that is because that, that's a window in there, but I took that, that you couldn't tell that's it's in the basement. The point being is um, these builders are recognizing that and doing that, and it's about a third of the cost when you think about the third of the cost of finishing that down there as compared to putting that uh, second level on there. That's another thing, the uh, wide open stairways, you gotta have a reason to encourage that, plus the fact that what you wanna do is you want that air to flow up and down. Just, you know, you wouldn't have a little door going up to your second level. And the theory is why have a little door going down to the lower level. That was kind of a cool concept right there too. It's the same thing, it doesn't, it, it hug the wall there so it didn't take up so much room. See, it leaves a wide open footprint in the upper level. That was a real nice, uh, that was down in Texas as well. And that was a, th that was, uh, a third level. I had two levels then down to the bottom, which I could see that really being applicable here in, in Canada with your tight uh, lot lines and your the small footprint, which is smart. And there's a lot of square footage in there that you could uh, take advantage of. A lot of people go, well, you're, ta you're taking away our storage. If you take away that basement, no, we'll just give it to you in a different way. If you think about that, look at the, the decking over there. It says as a door. And basically, that's going to be the front porch. And what they're doing is is utilizing that. So make this, you know, design it from the get go with, uh, a, you know, storage around it through the front porch, or even underneath the back patio. You can also have a little door like that going out, and then have the back patio like that. So with with storage. So you can see that that that. Uh, Home there is uh, not too far from our facility in Utah, and that's typically what you'll see in most uh, most all homes, uh, especially out west. You can see those the, the the two guys in there working in that storage area, and that's going to be the front porch as well. And um, smart, it stays stays constant temperature down there. You can store pretty much anything; it's dry. There was another concept that that uh, came out of uh, some of these builders. They were they did away with the beams and columns, and they put grade beams and spot footings uh, underneath, and and then start building from the ground up. And I know that's really that's that's not common. That's not common we see in most basement markets. But when you think about it, it makes a heck of a lot of sense because. You're not, put, you're not trying to get all that material down there. Just think how much faster and easier is for the trades and everything to get in there and, and uh, frame that from the get-go. And then lay your floor on it. This is one of the first houses we did, and this is where the TJIs were used. Um, as we progressed in other areas, we started, uh, well, they, the builders started using uh, trusses. And everybody goes, oh, well, the trusses are a lot more. Well, they are a little bit more, but when you think about the big picture and then you're putting the... <coughs> the uh, air system through there, and it makes for a, a lot nicer floor to walk on, too. Okay, this is another concept that, that uh, was kind of interesting. Now, when you, when you think about it, that's a, a footing pour, and that's very typical to what you probably see here as well. When you think about it, you, you know, you've got to mobilize a crew. You've got to get um, you know, your concrete or your concrete or your pump. And basically what you're doing is you're not pouring a whole lot of concrete for a whole bunch of effort, okay? Some of the guys in central Utah, this was in New Mexico actually, what they did, 
just pour the the footing and the floor all at once. And a lot of uh, you know, uh, like I said, uh, and at a lot of places it's not applicable, but it's just something to talk about here. But when you think about it, it really makes a lot of sense. That um, you can see that little area there. That's a, a keyway, and then he's got a piece of rubber. Two inches pours into the floor and two inches pours into the wall for the water stop. Plus, what that does is that gives you an additional four inches of headroom because you're not pouring up that floor. Okay? And four inches down there is huge. And he's finishing that and he's getting ready to put his panels on. So, what you got is you've got a nice flat floor that you can set your panels on. And pour it all the way to the top of that concrete, and you've got a full eight foot or nine foot. Which, when you think about it, think about doing away with the, the fur down and the duct work, and the additional four inches of, of headroom. And once again, it makes it a whole different living area down there. So that's basically the way they, the, the concrete guy turns it over to the builder. And see, there, here's an example of that. Spray on waterproofing, you know, which in dry climates is probably okay. Up here, obviously, it's not going to work, and that's what uh, the Delta is a, is a great product. We have a, a guy on our, our staff that draws in Revit 3D, so you can see that those are some of the different, you know, the Southwest, the Mid Atlantic, the New England. We, we had him draw uh, those houses on an acre, okay? And uh, I'll be, I know that in Canada you, get, you put a lot more houses on an acre than that, but the point being it was like 12,500 square feet of living area collectively on all those houses um, on that one acre. And you can see this is to proportion, so there's, there's plenty of room um, on a small footprint with a lot of, uh, and all of these are built with, um, you know, the up, large upper level, wide open, and then the, the, the downstairs as well. This is a, a uh, subdivision in, outside in Salt Lake City that is very similar to the Canadian market. That looks just kind of like what, what your market does here. And see, that that's a three-foot projection, and whereas... Um, in Canada, it's at 24, going to 30 inches, going to two foot six, uh, as the new code's coming out. Um, but the point is, is you can put it in real tight, compact spaces, and it will perform well. And not, uh, you know, as long as you don't hit it with a piece of equipment, it, it, you're going to backfill it fine. There's no problem. You don't need to brace it. I know that some of these here, you've got to brace them before you backfill it. You don't need to do that here. Um, And so you can just see it's just part of the, uh, it's very similar, I mean, your, your, your window's just like that too, um, in the construction process here. I took the picture of that little house. That little house is 2,000 square feet, it's 1,000 and 1,000 on that small little footprint. And, and it's energy, very energy efficient because you're the, you limit the exposure of walls and um, windows and so on. Kind of modern. This 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 builder is a, uh, in Salt Lake is very very uh, successful. Um, he does a lot with uh, geothermal and solar. In fact, uh, when they first got going, they were uh, advertising five and ten dollar a month utility bills, and that's about what they were doing with the geothermal and the solar in there. And just for you know. Obviously, the future and the way that things are going with uh, the solar and uh, renewable energies. Here's that one acre site plan again. Here was that theory about the uh, the geothermal, and ultimately, the best thing to do the geothermal would be to drill it underneath the garage floor, and you'd probably need about 500 lineal feet of pipe in the ground to satisfy the heating requirement and the cooling requirements necessary. Just some ideas, our, uh, 
3D guy I drew a something kind of similar to that modern look. This was some of the uh, when we were working down there in different parts of uh, the Southwest. Um, we were advertising or promoting, you know, the upper level and the lower level. And the, you know, the, the final thing there is, uh, you know, just you can see the comfort zone, 73 in the first living level, 74 in the second, 75 in the ceiling. And that was documented, and you can see the airflow going up and down and so on. So once again, it's uh, just ways to maximize and uh, be smart with that uh, area you've got down there. Um, And that's uh, hopefully some information that you can use and be helpful and um, maybe take with you. So we've got some samples here. We're working with Blair Building Materials here in Toronto. They've got, um, they've got some of our systems in stock. We've been uh, looking and partnering with other builders, um, looking for show homes, model homes, that maybe we can even uh, donate samples to to to, to try. Um, we would rather spend our money advertising that way than to put, put money in a magazine. We'd rather have something to go on the wall that people can touch and feel and, um, and do something with. So, thank you very much. Appreciate the opportunity and we really like to love the Canadian people up here and um, look forward to, uh, to working with you. Thank you. Any questions? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, sir, it doesn't. In fact, I've got a. Uh, not, I, I, had to, I had to put everything on. Uh, Vivian's computer, but we've actually got a thing. It's basically two inch rigid around the, the sides and then a, a, over the footing. And that's what um, a lot of it, we found out too, exploring that a lot of the builders kept it, kept the window high at 50 inches so they wouldn't have to do that, or 50 or 60 inches depending on the location. But that's how much ground cover you got to have over the footing before you have to um, put the foam in there. Isn't that correct? Yes, sir. In fact, you know we're working we're working with Cardell uh, there in, in uh, Blackstone. There's a bunch of them there, and uh, EQ, and um, a couple other folks. Uh, the names escape me, but yeah, we've we've had real real good luck there. But you, if you if you're interested, if you'd like to go out and look at them, there, there's the uh, in fact um, the the president of Cardell sent out a uh, newspaper uh, advertisement. Uh, you know, claiming that they're, they're the first bringing them in and so on. And there was a nice article in the, in the Ottawa Sun about it. So it's really nice. So, but thank you. Yes, sir, that's correct. And, and uh, what I was going to tell you, too, is, is if you go to our website, the bowman-kemp.com, um, in fact, I, I've got to, I want to give you some literature before you leave. Um, there's a big, there's a red button on there that says, uh, click to learn and see more or learn and view more. And it's got, it was basically designed for Canada. And it's got pictures, it's got videos, it's got the, the foam insulation you're talking about, and it's all there um, for you to, uh, to view. But in fact, let me, I apologize, let me, get, let me grab that literature and I'll pass it out. This right here is just a, just an example, you know, a, a kind of a brochure of all the products.
information, um, and also a you know, the website that you can, can access more information on. Are you builders or architects or both or architects? You're a builder here in town. Yeah, you know there's a the uh, the renovation is a good uh, good opportunity too. Thank you. Um, what you would you wouldn't want to use the whole system. You'd want to use our window well and the grate and cover and the ladder, which makes for a heck of a Nice product if you are cutting those in, you know. Um, we recommend the the frame being used in new construction because you want that frame completely filled up with concrete, and you wouldn't be able to fill it up with concrete correctly. So what we recommend on the retrofit is to cut the hole in the wall, mount the window of your choice, and then wrap our window well, grate cover, and ladder around it, and that that's, that makes for a nice fit there too. And all our products, yes, sir. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Our frames come in a bunch of different widths, and we still have a lot of lot foundations in different parts of Pennsylvania and so on, and yes, it does. It'll work with the uh, um, arcs, like the building blocks, the uh, insulated concrete blocks. Uh, it will work with that. We've got a, a, a PowerPoint on that as well. Um, over the four decades, we've had so much opportunity to, to meet and to um, address and answer questions, and some of the some of these things have evolved, and we've uh, addressed them. So yes, we're feel very comfortable and confident that uh, you'll be you'll be happy and they'll work. And uh, well, to give you an example, thousands of them go out every day across the U.S. and and uh, they're they're just a re repeat repeat order. So maximum size maximum size is six feet by five feet. And that's a, a, almost looks like a sliding glass door down there. Which makes for a heck of a statement though. The a six foot by five foot does require a little bit kid glove handling, if you will, because um, that's just a, a big window down there. And, but very doable, we do them all the time. The, the, on the nine foot walls, the four foot by five foot is really, really nice. On the eight foot walls, the four foot by four foot is really nice. But what we're finding too is, in, 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 especially in Toronto, you guys are building houses so fast here that you, you don't need to change anything. And I mean, they're just being sold really quick. But at some point, it seems like that uh, in the different, may, maybe in maybe in the in the center part of town, but at, on the outer skirts, I think that there's some uh, opportunity there. And um, yeah. Yes, thank you. The the complete um, 4040 system is about 1,200 Canadian for everything. Okay, the the three foot by three foot six, which is the minimum to meet your requirements, will probably be about 800 Canadian, 750 to 800 Canadian, and that would that would pretty much. Um, well, it would. It would meet all your egress requirements and be very much apples to apples to what you're, you're, com you're uh, comparable to here. That was a good question, but the, the reason I bring that up is that every, you know, every penny is really important in, to the builder, and we understand that and we respect that. And we're not just going in and saying, hey, just put this in because it's neat and you're just going to spend extra money. No, no, no. That's why we're trying to do something to help encourage that, give a reason to, to put the... Put those in there instead of just hey we're great guys these are neat you know and um, so yeah so it's about about eight hundred dollars Canadian will meet your egress requirements and from what I understand currently the price is somewhere around six six hundred six fifty Canadian for that is what I've heard in different parts of, of Canada so for another couple hundred bucks you're gonna have a lot 
a lot nicer looking egress require compatible uh, system in there. Yes, yes, sir. It is. It's it, it's a three D paint, and um, we, we we were we were painting them white, and then we kind of went into a kind of a sandstone color, and then we evolved to this one, which is the stack stone, which seems to be a uh, you know what people were looking for. I mean, it's substantially. Just think, if you were to put a, a stack of pavers in there, what that would cost you to do? It'd be very very expensive, and you know. What's interesting is um, they go. I mean, they, they work from anywhere from the, the starter home all the way up to the to the big, big, expensive home, and so it's very, it's very versatile, very util, you know, and it's unique and it's something different that. Uh, it, hopefully, what it does to the builders is it allows them to separate themselves, differentiate themselves, and uh, ideally, you know, and. and and we don't ever try to tell anybody how to, to do their business, but it seems like a lot of times the builder goes, oh, I know, I'll mark that up and charge 3000 Canadian for it. Okay, yes, sir, you can, certainly can. However, maybe it would make better sense to put three or four of them in the, the basement and up your price, but just have that as a, a, a differentiating, a separating factor from your house to the, the guy next door. And that's what we've seen a lot in different parts is a lot of people want to take it and run with it and be the first one on the block so that they too um, can kind of differentiate and separate themselves. So, and that's ultimately the, the, you know, it's like a big, you know, turning the big ship around. And we understand and, and we respect that and builders got their things going. However, you know, it's like the, we used to send faxes and we never had cell phones and things changed and everybody carries a cell phone. So it, it's uh, just evolution, it's change, and it's, uh, it's all good. And it's very economical to do, too. It's not like, what we'd like to do is have them as common as water heaters in all the houses. So I'll leave you with that theory. Any other questions? Yes. It, yeah, it doesn't amplify the light. It just keeps out the the um, leaves, trash, yeah. whatever. You know, and, and for the most part, it, it pretty much keeps out the water. You know, it doesn't matter. It's completely sealed. You don't need that on there. It it won't leak. You know, it it. But it does it does uh, keep it nice and clean. Now you would still recommend having some sort of a drain system. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. No. No. Yes. Yes. There's no, yeah, definitely tie that in there. And, it, and it's, it's simple, that's, that's simple and inexpensive as well to, to, to stub that up from the footing drain, absolutely. Yes, sir. Uh, it's uh, Lexan. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. No, sir, that's not, but the, the uh, steel grate is. The steel grate, we almost recommend you've got to have a steel grate on there because you, wouldn't want somebody falling in, you know. So, a combination of the two, the steel grade and the plastic cover, you, you, 800 pounds can go on that. Yes, ma'am. It just sits on there because you want it to be able to slide off in case of a requirement. Also, you want to be able to have the fireman be able to ingress there as well. And, and so, you want it, it just sits on that rubber lip and it just slides off. A lot of people say, well, what about ice and snow buildup. Yeah, it, that could happen. Um, but it's like, you know, it's like anything. If, you know, you just shovel it. If that, if that was a concern, you would shovel it. And a lot of times, you know, what we find is through the combination of the eaves and the heat in the home, and next time you think about it, unless it's blown sideways, but just think, look, look around your house. Most of the time, or you know, about a foot around the whole house is pretty. That doesn't get too much snow in it because the heat keeps it keeps it off. So same thing will happen there. You know, you won't very you won't get a whole lot of buildup of snow, which I know is I know the reason I brought that up is always always a concern. The one thing there there is the only concern is that that frame is made out of steel, and when the combination of 
really, really cold and warm air in the basement meat, there's going to be condensation, especially in the, in the here. So the recommendation, and done research on this, is that's why, that's why we encourage finishing that all the way up to the um, window. And on that website, too, there's a finished presentation that shows that. And what it does is basically it's like putting a, one of those koozies on a cold bottle, uh, and it eliminates the moisture. And same thing holds true with these. And we've got these uh, for, for decades in, you know, Minnesota and northern New York. and all, Very, very climates, very, very similar to here. And uh, everybody's, everybody's happy with everybody loves them. And they're simple and it's a great product. Thank you very much, all of you, for your time and uh, for your interest. Have a nice day.